The contents of this video are being displayed in the bulleted text and we do hope you enjoy this video. Another good tip on Internet Explorer is setting your home page. So if I was to go back to our tools and go to Internet Options, what we can do is we can set our home page just here. So in general, we've got it currently at the moment as commentary.ac.uk. If I was to cancel that and go to google.co.uk and then go back to the same steps, Internet Options, and click Use Current, Apply, and if we press the home page, it'll automatically repeat what's on the screen for us anyway, which is Google. Keep in mind that is highly likely to come up in your test, everybody. Where we would we would go and what we would click to set the current web page as our home page. So use current. If it came with a um, a web page that you needed to type in, so you can type in www.coventry.ac.uk. Click apply. OK. Click home. And our home page will be the Coventry University website. Another factor that may come in to your um, test is being aware about pop-ups. So Internet Explorer has a really strong tool that normally um, shows at the bottom and you may have seen it if you were accessing your diagnostic through Internet Explorer. It automatically prevents any website that um, opens new windows without you first clicking the link. It's really, really handy because sometimes you find websites, particularly shopping websites, they'll be hounding you with their sales or any deals or anything that's going on. What you can do with Internet Explorer is um, decide if you want to allow the pop-ups only once or always for the site. You may get this in your test because it will ask you where you would click to ensure that the pop-ups for this website are always shown. If it was for always shown, options for this site. So you'd select over there and it'd give you the option to do always allow to. Cookies cookies are small, simple text files that are kept on a website to, that stores information that you've been looking at on a website. So it's good, it records useful data, account details, page views, settings, and shopping carts online. Cookies are available to you, same place, internet options, and it's through security. Because I'm using a university computer, and you should find the same on campus, you won't be able to see it. But if you use one of your home computers, you should see a shuttle just here. So in your test, if you're asked to point where you control the the um, the strength of blocking cookies or allowing restrictions or allowing all, this shuttle, if you were to point it in other direction, I'll presume it's at the top, it will go to the strongest at the bottom, it will allow everything. So just to be aware that if you see this in your test, this is where you would choose, your you would allow third party cookies to um, be saved, saved on your computer or not having them being used at all. Your test um, that you'll be taking may also ask you to identify uh, which websites are secure, which ones that are encrypted so when any information is sent or received over the connection is scrambled. So you'll see this URL just here, spreadsheet.google.com. You'll see the S just there. That means that it has been set to secure. You also have the padlock there too to identify that there is a, um, a a certificate that's holding, but keep in mind, particularly for your test, HTTPS, what, what's showing is it has been secure too. Uh, just a few things, I won't go into too much detail on this uh, slide, just um, staying safe, so obviously um, ensure that you're uh, not downloading anything that's illegal. Um, in your test, you may be asked, um, would you, uh, for instance, uh, what the imp um, implication of downloading something illegal? You may find that if you download something that is uh, looks legitimate, but it's not, it may be actually um, disguising itself as a virus. So maybe in your test, it might ask um, for a few things just to be a bit um, savvy of using um, um, the internet or what downloading correct. Same also goes with data protection. Um, may ask you in your test to point out what um, is correct, um, um, what you can um, hold um, your personal data. Um, if a business is having it, what is the reason for it? So it should be legitimately um, have a purpose um, and it should be fairly and lawfully. But also the um, individuals that have your data must make sure that it's kept up to date and it's accurate as well and only using it for its original purpose as well. You may also be asking your test to um, just define what copyright is. So a copyright law for any of original work on the internet, that being text, images, music, videos, software, or games. 
Um, it's copied and can only be used um, with the permission that is being expressed by the owner um, of the, um, the person that's originally created it. Just in this table here, it's just describing some of the um, communication um, technologies that are available through the internet and online, um, through chat rooms, instant messages, um, email, which we're going to be going through a bit um, in the second video, um, conferencing and SMS, so short messaging service as well. The one that I particularly want to keep an eye on um, is VoIP, which may show up in your test. So if anyone here um, on, on this video is um, familiar with using um, Skype, um, the correct um, term um, for Skype, um, what, it, what it really is, is VoIP, so it's Voice Over Internet Pro protocol that terminology may show up in your test so if you're asked what is VOIP the term is voice over internet protocol which is allows you to make phone calls over the internet as well as a webcam towards friends family and colleagues or anyone over the internet around the world too also online communities, um, forums, bulletin and bulletin boards, social networking, for instance, Facebook and Twitter, games, so I know PlayStation Network, Xbox Live, virtual learning environment, so what we're using at the moment, Aula, um, is, is your virtual learning environment, which you're allowed to access your resources, interact with myself um, and um, your peers, and also the cloud, which is a online storage um, area. Um, which allows you to save um, files and gives you the opportunity to access it anywhere in the world. You may be asked um, in your test to disc um, to select what's the most suitable um, storage um, area for a file that you want to access if you if you don't save it on a, a removable device like a USB. The cloud allows you to do that because you save it in your own space and then if you were to let's say for example go to another city and you're to log on to um, your computer you can grab the file by logging into the cloud um, portal and grabbing your files from there. So it's available to you wherever there's an internet connection. So it's really, really handy. They may come up in your test too. Sharing content. So several um, technologies available for sharing content. And when that means content, that means um, of expression of opinion. Um, it could mean files um, as well. So blogs is uh, a good one where you can um, use as a journal to post um, anything that's on your mind. Micro blogs. So pretty um, kind of um, used if anyone's familiar with Twitter. Um, gives you opportunity to write a blog um, or what's on your mind with just a quick short sentence. Um, Wikipedia, um, a wiki, is a website that allows you to edit your own website. But what we were saying before about um, the authentic uh, authenticity of a web page, the problem is with um, wiki um, pages um, is it allows users to go in um, into repository and edit them uh, or contribute themselves. And some things may be legit, maybe not. In your test, you may also be asked uh, what a podcast is. A podcast is a video or an audio um, file that's been created by a user and is distributed on the internet for other people to go and listen or view as well. And also media sharing, different websites that allows you to um, go and um, um, upload web pages, uh, sorry, uh, videos, images, um, so that other people can grab and use um, freely as well. On your test, another area that may pop up is netiquette. So what netiquette is, is, is um, communicating um, correctly and respectfully over the internet. So if, if I was meeting you face to face, I wouldn't be aggressively shouting at you. I would be talking in a manner that is um, welcoming and um, and, and um, a able to communicate in a very clear way. Same with um, if we're um, emailing or if we're um, doing a message online we wouldn't use uppercase um, words because that would presume that we're shouting at the individual or same with um, a exclamation mark several times um, be all tolerant and never send angry messages um, that, which you may find your test to describe that and you're sending an angry message on the internet it's called a flame and post um, and anything you post particularly on the internet ensure that it's not something that's a bit um, hostile or anything that may embarrass you because the problem with the internet is that once it's on there it's highly likely to be stored and saved for a very long time so your um, your your footprint on the internet is something that you may regret before but everything that is regarded as network etiquette so it's just a point to be aware of we won't go into too much detail in privacy and security. It was kind of covered in the first module that we did. But also ensure that anything that you're publishing online, personal information, um, be um, confident of where it's being posted. But if you were to put anything um, that is personal on an email 
or on a blog or on a bulletin board so just make sure that it's nothing personal because messages will highly likely not be encrypted and other people can grab it too so another point in your test you may be um, asked to state would you um, put your personal information onto an email over a unsecure network highly likely um, in, in real world you would never do that so in your test you would point out you wouldn't be doing